Hello. We are going to go now over the PN junction. And what I'm going to do is first give you an overview, and then we will go step by step to try to understand it. So if you recall, if we have a piece of dope silicon, like P-type silicon, this is as good as a resistor. Basically, this is a material that we are able to um, control the conductivity based on the doping concentration. So the current voltage characteristics of this material, if this is the voltage and this is the current, for a given concentration, a given temperature, but particularly for a given concentration, we're going to have some resistance and we can, for the same voltage, increase the current, meaning increase the conductivity or reduce the resistance like this, right? Go increasing it by the doping of the doping concentration of acceptor atoms, column three. So we have a conductor or a resistor whose conductivity or resistivity is proportional or dependent on that doping concentration. Similarly, for n-type, if you dope the material with column 5, you get something very similar. The current voltage characteristics are similar to a resistor whose resistance or whose conductivity for the material is going to be dependent. I mean, you can increase it, right? You can make it a better conductor by increasing the doping concentration. So far, so good. Now, really, the first new semiconductor structure that is useful to us is when, as part of the same crystal, so same crystal, it's a single piece of crystal, you dope one side with column 3, such as boron, and create p-type material. Right? So you're going to have holes. which are going to enable electron movement in the balance band. On the other side, you dope with column 5, pentavalent atoms such as phosphorus. Okay. And so these are donor atoms. That are going to enable us to have a material with a lot of free electrons. Now, when you do this as part of the same crystal, you have something that is new. You have a semiconductor structure. I'm going to tell you the end result, but then explain it in other videos. That if we are to put an electric field, like a source here, And we are to see the current voltage characteristics of this device, the PN junction. They look like this. In the forward bias, so with this polarity, plus here connected to the P and negative connected to the n type material. Now we do not have a current voltage characteristic like a resistor. But we have something that initially as we increase the voltage, it does not conduct current. So it behaves like a very high resistor or close to an insulator. Okay, high resistance region. And then it gets to a point where that voltage, uh, in the case of a silicon, PN junction is around 0 0.7 volts. Now you have very 
for very small changes in voltage, very large changes in current. Okay, and exponential increase like that. So effectively, in the forward bias, forward bias with this polarity, you have a material that behaves like this, where you have a region where it behaves as a very high resistor or an insulator, and another one where it behaves very close to a conductor right there. And this is very useful because you can create diodes, you can create rectific solve the problem of rectification, as well as it's the most fundamental building block to create transistors, PJT transistors, Morphet transistors. It is really important in IC circuit design. It's a new current voltage characteristic. It's not a current voltage characteristic of a resistor. It's not a current voltage characteristic of a capacitor, an inductor. It's something new. Now, we are going to see that this equation, the current in this PN junction, is going to be small constant here. It's going to be proportional to E to the minus the voltage and Vt. This is the thermal voltage. Okay, so th this actually is an exponential relationship. Now, what happens if we reverse the polarity? If we reverse the polarity, this is how it's going to look, the current voltage characteristics. Actually, I'm going to do it right here. Voltage, current, what we see when we reverse the polarity is that you keep increasing the voltage in the opposite direction and you get almost no current up to a very high voltage for typical diodes, typically in excess of 50 volts, and then you have breakdown, something like this. Okay? Breakdown voltage. That's what you see in the reverse bias. Some other diodes that are thinner diodes, you can have that, that characteristic at lower voltages. We, co we call that the thinner voltage. And it's a different effect. We are going to see that one is caused to, over here, high voltages. This is to called a physical mechanism known as avalanching. And over here is known to a physical, the thinner effect. So, we could do the combined current voltage characteristics, voltage, current, as an exponential in the forward bias region, 0 0.7 volts, and then almost no current. This is not to scale, so I can draw it. You get something like that, reverse bias voltage. And so we may be able to write the complete equation Is E V V T minus one. So if this term here is zero, you get the saturation current. So let's point out a couple of things. So we have a region in the forward bias of high resistance we have a region of low resistance. Similarly, in the reverse bias, we have a region of high resistance or no current, and then you have a region where that changes significantly. In the next series of videos, and by the way, with this, we already can create a model. We can work out and, and, and work with, with diodes. We can say, okay, in this region, if we are operating in the forward bias, forward bias re region, this is the reverse bias here, reverse bias. Well, from zero to 0 0.7 volts, this is pretty much an open. So we that will, and then after 0 0.7 volts, 
It's a conductor. Meaning we can approximate the current voltage characteristics in a first order model like this. Zero, and then it's a conductor. Or you can approximate it by here you have a resistor, which is very high, and then the other one is a resistor, which is much lower. And so you are modeling it in that case, like this, a constant slope. The big picture though is that we went from having N type and P type with current voltage characteristics, more or less like a resistor, whose resistivity or conductivity of the material was controlled by the doping concentrations, to when we join them together as part of the same crystal, to create a device that has this characteristic. And it is a very useful characteristic. It enables us to solve the problem of fortification, which is important for power supplies. It enables us to create all the other semiconductors. This is going to enable us to do amplification with transistors, as well as other things. Okay, so this is the equation for the PN junction that we are going to see. And with this, you have enough to do circuit analysis and you have enough to actually work with diodes. But it is very good, especially to understand transistors, especially to understand ICs and other semiconductor devices, to really think and to really understand, at least at a conceptual level, why this behavior, why is it that you have a region where you have very high resistance? Why is it that it doesn't conduct from the very beginning? Why is it that then it conducts really rapidly? Right? So for that, we need to study what happens. One well, of the videos we need to focus as to what happens here under when we connect the voltage supply in that orientation under forward bias. Forward bias, why do we have that IV curve? Okay? Can we explain it from a more fundamental physics perspective? even if qualitatively. Second, why does this happen? Why if we connect it in the opposite direction? After all, it's like the same type of material. Why is it that if we connect the positive to the N type and the negative to the P type, the material doesn't conduct? Right? So under reverse bias, why do we have that behavior? Why then, after some voltage, do we have this breakdown? What causes it? What is the physical mechanism? What is this peculiarity of these 0 0.7 volts in silicon or 0 0.3 in germanium? Why is it that you do not conduct first and then actually conducts? What happened there in the structure? I mean, just think about it. This is not, although you have P and N, how this behave depends on the orientation of the supply. If you, if, if you use this to create a diode, again, and you can use these structures to create other things, but if you use it to create a, a diode, current flows only in one direction, and it does not flow in the other. This is one of the things that enables you to do rectification. It's a new device, okay? Flows in one direction, it does not flow in the other. Acts as a conductor in one direction, acts as an insulator in the other direction. Cool. So we have created here a semiconductor, semiconductor that depending on how the volt, the external voltage, whether one side is more positive than the other, is a good, a very good conductor, or it is a very good insulator. Cool. And that's because of this current voltage characteristics. You see, it does not conduct that range, but then it conducts. So that's our plan of attack, understanding why this happened, why it is a, an insulator for a part, why it is a conductor there, why the 0 0.7, why um, it does not conduct on the reverse values. If it conducts, uh, then we, uh, in breakdown, how does breakdown works? And there is this small current here, that this model here has the saturation current. What is that? Why do we have that saturation current? So stay tuned. That's what we're going to try to understand. Thank you.